Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Star Trek Judgment Rights. When last we left off, we managed to deal with the situation in the museum concerning the probe. I'm going with the, this video as if I've done the uh, negotiation ending, rather than the uh, ending where we just uh, knocked out the um, people that were holding the guards hostage in the museum. And this uh, noise has persisted, and as far as I've checked with uh, other people playing through this, these noises are something you can't really get rid of. So um, I'm just going to have to plow ahead to get to the next system, and hopefully the noises will go when we move beam into the next area. But first, let's talk to Spock. Atabis is located in the Klingon neutral zone. The Federation won the colonization rights for that planet as per the Organian Peace Treaty. Both Federation and Klingon ships are allowed there. That's something to uh, take into consideration, which means we shouldn't shoot on any Klingon ships that are there. Also, we need to head over to uh, basically where that um, system is, which is over here. Also, this is really how quiet it should be, but that sound persists anywhere outside the screen at the moment. And this video. Alien ship in sensor range. I detect one Klingon battlecruiser on a parallel course. Well, we're both probably heading to examine what's going on. The Klingon commander is hailing us. Not a surprise. On screen. Hello, Klingon commander. Greetings, Enterprise. Welcome to Atavis. I am Captain Kla. Hello. What are you doing here? Hello. We might as well ask him that. And I am Captain Kirk. Greetings yourself. That's a little rude. I take it that this is not your vessel. Indeed, this master ship is not their vessel, I imagine. What are you doing here? Let's ask that. Given that the disputed planet Atavis has not yet been awarded to either side, we have as much right to be here as you. I do hope you understand that an alien vessel in our neutral zone is a matter of legitimate concern. I apologize if it seems confrontational. This is not the time for battle. I mean only to defend Klingon in prison. Diplomatically impossible. That is sufficient for a formal introduction. Klar, out! Indeed. And no shots were fired. Well, it never rains, but pours. Mr. Sulu, take us into a parallel course with the alien ship. Indeed. Aye, aye, Captain. Let's do so. It's an odd ship. Let's talk to Spock about it and see what his um, actual um, science machinery can figure out. Sensors appear to be experiencing malfunctions. Fascinating. Some anomalous readings are reoccurring. That would indicate that the ship itself is changing in unexpected ways. I have no explanation for the phenomenon. I have found at least one area that is suitable for transport. Well, if there's one area suitable for transport, we might as well try and transport. Let's go. We're beaming aboard the alien vessel. Have Dr. McCoy meet us in the transporter room. Spock, come with me. Lieutenant Uhura, if its communication system is malfunctioning, then we'll need you. Indeed. We don't actually know if it is, but um, they haven't communicated with anyone yet, so let's just presume it is. Yes, Captain. Mr. Scott? You have the call. Indeed. Take us away, Chief Kyle. No red shirts this time. Here we are. In this place. With a different background sound effect. The uh, ambience of the ship, I believe. So, that is gone. It is a much quieter sound effect, which is nice. Let's look around. Although in some ways the epitome of the old-time country doctor... Dr. McCoy hasn't seen evidence of this kind of thing since med school. So I do believe that from now on, the end of the mission is just going to overwrite the um, the ambient sound effect is going to be in there. I think this is one of the last missions, though, so we are near the end of the game. The sharp-eyed communications officer prepares herself for anything, her dark gaze watchful. Well, let's have a look at what Spock has to say. The wise-looking science officer raises an eyebrow wondering if there is some rational explanation for what appears to be quite irrational. Probably. Captain Kirk, proud leader of men and women braving the unknown reaches of space. He hopes to find the way to prevent this ship from landing on the Atabus colony town. And he's dubious about what he sees in this room. I wonder why. 
We have to find a way to help these people. Indeed. I find the situation in this room disturbingly irrational at first impression, Captain. I suggest we endeavor to understand what we see around us in order to make a sensible analysis. Not a bad thing to think. Captain, individuals on this ship appear to be suffering, perhaps from certain mental disorders. Were I to examine them, I might be able to determine something more. Possibly. We'll have to talk to them first, I think. Captain, this place gives me the willies. I feel like I'm on a yellow alert without knowing why. Hmm. Well, let's have a look around. A potted plant. It is a plant. A potted plant. That's also a plant. A set of books. That is a book. Or rather, multiple. A simple sliding door of reasonable dimensions for a person to walk through. Not bad. A potted plant. Yup. A chair. This seems pointless. Oh. Grinagog watches everything, eyes shining brightly. His legs are pulled up off the floor and he hugs his knees. An enormous grin never leaves his face. How do we know his name? Good question. This person is staring at the surface of the table in front of him, blinking from time to time. His complexion is sallow and he seems tired. He never looks up but occasionally flicks away a speck of dust from the otherwise spotless table. Hmm. I'm going to have a look at these plants. They all look different, and yet they're all described so blandly. Hmm. Interesting. The plant does not register in the Tricord of Botany file, but it does suggest similarities to Algolian Crocus. Oh? Algolian Crocus? Is an algo three the system with the semi-intelligent plant life? Oh dear. Affirmative, Doctor. There are characteristics of similar developments in this plant, but on a more limited scale. Fair enough. What about this one? Interesting. The plant does not register in the Tricorder's botany file, but it does suggest similarities to a Shasthar tree on the planet Beta-3. Oh. It's beautiful, Mr. Spock. It is quite well maintained. Interesting. The plant does not register in the Tricorder's botany file, but it does suggest similarities to a Nemocinian cactus. Ah. The ones that can shoot thorns at people? Oh dear. Only three varieties of that plant can shoot thorns, Doctor. Nor do I detect that ability from this specimen. Well, that is fortunate. Let's talk to the people here. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. What's going on here? Who's in charge? I'm not sure he's going to give us much of an answer. Nobody's really in charge. Maybe the phase. That's one of the things that makes me so nervous. Nobody's really in charge. I try to take charge of little things, like making sure the lights work. I don't like the dark. Are you going to be in charge now? Maybe you should talk to the phase first. Oh? The phase? What's the phase? Good question. Why don't you just tell me what's going on here? If you need help, the Federation has many resources. I think we should just ask the more direct question. Would you tell me about this ship? Why are you going to land in a town on Atavis? Why didn't you respond to our hail? Hmm. We didn't actually hail you, so let's ignore that one. The phase? What's the phase? Indeed. We contemplate our phase. Some of our people think they're the ones who keep everything going. Sometimes they tell us things to do. They remind some people when to eat. <laughs> Otherwise, they'd forget. I don't forget, but that's because I'm smart. If you want to, you can probably talk to the phase in the oratory. Fair enough. The builders built the oratory. The room there to the south, they built the garden north. If you're hungry or if your head ain't feeling right, there's food and such in the hall. Through there, the west door. The rest hall is through the east door, but you might have to wait for one of the beds. The builders were just so logical. They, they thought of everything. <laughs> you can go anywhere. Oh, that's handy. You know, Jim, I don't think there's much more he can tell us. I can take a tricorder reading on him if you think it's appropriate. I'm sure we will. Let's talk to this man first. Go away. You're breathing on my table. What? Go away. You're breathing on my table. He does not want us to get that table dirty. Let's scan these and see what's wrong. If anything. His mental activity is very high, but doesn't seem pathologic, Jim. 
respiratory activity indicates a high degree of anxiety by comparison with others of his race. Now that much stress is unhealthy if this is a chronic state. Probably is. Slightly undernourished, sluggish pulmonary and circulatory conditioning. Doesn't get nearly enough exercise, I'd say. Brainwave activity uneven. I'd need a battery of tests to be sure. This is a complete new race, after all, but he may be suffering from some blood chemistry imbalances likely to be affecting his mind. Hmm. Not much we can do here. I mean, what's that thing? A potted plant. Oh, that's not a potted plant, but we'll just let you think it is. I think we'll move over here next. Oh, well, something is going on here. Lieutenant Uhura shifts uncomfortably under the intense gaze of the elderly fellow on the throne-like chair. Bone seems to be thinking that the rather heavy individual sitting on the floor has the look of someone who has been emotionally deprived. Someone who would benefit from some closer contact with others. Well, we can always talk to that person. The Vulcan raises an eyebrow, finding the situation quite illogical. This does not surprise me. The captain wants to know what these people can contribute to his efforts to put a halt to this ship landing on the colony town. And he's dubious about what he sees in this room. Eh, uh, not surprised. This situation calls for a good diplomat or a good psychiatrist. Do we have either of those aboard with us? These two individuals may be able to tell us something, Captain. Thanks, Buck. Captain, the man in that throne-like chair seems to be staring at me. Perhaps I should try to talk to him. Maybe. I'd like to examine these two individuals, Captain. Okay, let's talk to them. Let's look at them first. This individual wears a placid expression as he piles one block atop another, playing quietly. The incongruous thing is that he appears to be a full-grown adult. Noticing that you're looking at him, he raises his arms to you with a hopeful look. Fair enough. There's another plant here. This individual appears somewhat elderly, but he holds his head proudly and his shoulders are thrown back. He nods benignly at you and a yellowish crown slips down a little lower on his brow. He clenches a short silvery rod with a bulbous tip firmly in one hand. Like a king! A plant. Indeed. A plant. Let's scan these plants, because I don't trust any of these plants so far. What's this plant meant to be? This individual appears to be typical of his race. Perhaps somewhat elderly. The crown is made of paper, and the silvery rod he holds is wood wrapped with silver tape. Also, that is not what I clicked on at all. The ones that can shoot thorns at people? What, the silvery rods that can shoot so thorns on people? Only three varieties of that plant can shoot thorns, Doctor. Nor do I detect that ability from this specimen. Yeah, I think there was an error there. Let's scan the gentleman now. This individual. Now let's scan this one. Statistically speaking, this adult individual is overly heavy for an average humanoid in his frame. What is this? A piece of cloth. We might want that piece of cloth, but right now, let's talk to this, uh, fellow here. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Who are you indeed? Jakesy. Hello, Jakesy. What can you tell me about this place, Jakesy? Good question. The sweet-faced adult shakes his head no. Fair enough. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Who are you? Let's try again. Jakes. What can you tell me about this place, Jakes? That's uh, one option. Can I play with the blocks, Jakes? I don't think he's going to let us play with the box. Can you smile for me, Jakes? Let's ask if... Is there something you want, Jakes? That's a good question. The sweet-faced adult shakes his head no. Fair enough. Seems content. We could talk to this person, but actually let's, um, let's go with Uhura's idea. Let's have Uhura talk to him. Let's see what uh, he has to say. What a noble looking woman you are. You have my permission to speak. Oh, thank you. What a noble looking woman you are. You have my permission to speak. Do we... do we need the permission to speak? Okay. Talk then, I imagine? You stand out remarkably, bearing yourself like a queen. 
Yet these Carls do not treat you as royalty. Surely you have royal blood flowing in your veins? Interesting question. Bloodlines do not dictate who we listen to. We weigh a person's worth by their actions. My leader here is Captain Kirk, an admirable man. Speak with him. Hmm. I'm not sure he's going to listen. My ancestors ruled in the lands of Kush and Timbuktu. We may speak as peers, you and I. And what's the third option? Royalty recognizes royalty, does it not? Look on me and decide for yourself. You will know. Well, that's... Bloodlines oh, I'll put the second option, I think. Ruled in the lands of Kush and Timbuktu. We may speak as peers, you and I. Fair enough. Oh, I am so glad to find another of royal blood. I am so tired of sitting here all the time, but whenever I leave, thralls and lesser folk plant their fundaments on the great throne, and that's just not acceptable. I know you'll mind the proprieties and not let anyone else sit on the throne. And now, I'll finally be able to go and get some rest. Indeed. Off he goes. It's not much of a throne. It's really not much of a throne. An ordinary chair, originally similar to others in the room, except someone has nailed the legs onto a raised platform, increased the height of the back, widened the seat, and glued on broad and blocky arms. Bright paint in red and purple and gold gives it a garish appearance. You think it's meant to look impressive, but it just looks rather pathetic. That's sad. We should scan this throne. A simple construction of various metals and plastics, half a meter wide at the base. Arms have been added post-construction, as has the raised back and the base platform. Even the seat has been widened. Ah, fair enough. What about this plant? We didn't actually scan this plant, did we? The conspiracy of the plants continues! plant does not register in the Tricord of Botany file, but it does suggest similarities to Algolian Crocus. I think we may have already seen this one. Algolian Crocus. Yeah, we have. Affirmative. There is a button here by the looks of it. A normal looking switch. We could press that. Hmm. Well, we'll use it. Oh. The light bar connection is faulty and only the wire is holding it in place. Well, we could get that. It might be useful. I don't quite know why it would be useful, but we could certainly go get it. You managed to untwist a length of wire and a light bar. Well, that is good. I take it we don't want to scan this piece of cloth? Probably not a good idea. The tricorder detects cotton and a few other synthetic fabrics. Nothing out of the ordinary. Hmm. Fair enough. Well, there's not much we can do here. Um, we could keep exploring. I think right now we should go to the, um... Well, he said there was a rest area over here. Also, the, uh, noise is quieter in this room. There's a fair few people in here. Including the, um... The so-called king. This elderly individual lies on a bed, his eyes closed in sleep. He clutches a blue blanket tightly around him. There's this person here. A youngster is sitting alone, quietly playing. Fair enough. Captain Kirk is not impressed with the housekeeping skills of the people living in this room. Do they not meet your standards, Kirk? Bones thinks the youngster probably needs to get out more. He may do. The wise-looking Vulcan raises an eyebrow. It seems his eyebrow is perpetually raised here. The alert lieutenant thinks those living here have made at least half-hearted attempts to put their personal stamp on their living space. Difficult, starting from institutionalized beginnings. Let's talk to all the people here in our crew before we actually finish this video, I think. Good plan. The sleeper ship. Is there a more primitive way to achieve star travel? Oh, is this what this is? There are generation ships, Captain. Although I hesitate to engage in speculation, these people might have been the descendants of the original passengers, not the passengers themselves. That's possibly true. Given what I've seen, Spock, I don't think they'd survive as a generation ship. I'm surprised they've survived as long as they have. 
that would explain why they're trying to land on this planet. An astute observation, Doctor. I am impressed. You've impressed Spock. Well done. As much as I hate to break up this newly formed mutual admiration society, we have work to do. Yeah, indeed. I think the youngster looks a little wan, either from lack of the right foods or insufficient exercise, and there don't seem to be others his age he could pal around with. Hmm. I believe this room shows that this was, in fact, a sleeper ship, Captain. Notice the beds. They appear to be in general use now, but show every evidence of being cryosleep pods initially. Ah. That is a good observation. As institutionalized as this room appears, Captain, you can see people have done a few things to make it more their own. I wouldn't be surprised if people stash trinkets away. Things that have use and meaning to no one but them. Then again, I am definitely not going to suggest we go looking. Some of these beds don't appear to have been changed in longer than I want to think about. Some... However, if someone wants to show us one of their little treasure boxes, I'll bet it's been well hidden. That was a long gap there. I thought she wasn't going to finish that dialogue. But she did. She did finish it. And so, when we come back, folks, we shall continue exploring this area specifically. And basically see what's going on and talk to that um, young child there and basically look around and see what we can find. For, you never know, there might be many things. And who knows, maybe the background noise might quieten as we move further into the ship. You never know. You never know. So I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.